forms an integral part of this work. If I can ask you to turn to Acts, if we look at Acts 14 and verse 17. Acts 14, verse 17. Nevertheless, he did not leave himself without witness. In that he did, he did good, gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. Not filling our stomachs with food, filling our hearts with food. What's the food that we're talking about? The word of God. In Amos... Chapter 8 and verse 11. Amos 8 verse 11. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. So here we're not seeing of food, we're not talking of the physical thirst, we're talking of that lack of, of spiritual food and that lack of thirst for God. In John 6, in verse 35, it says, And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. There's a story in Luke, talks of the Good Samaritan. And in Luke 10, verses 30 to 36, it says, And Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a, a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn and took care of him. On the next day when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, take care of him and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbour to him who fell among the thieves? My question this morning is, which one am I? In Revelation 3, in verses 17 to 18, Revelation 3, 17 to 18, Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich and white garments that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. But what about the sick? In Proverbs 13, if we look at verse 12, it says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. We sung a hymn this morning about hope. People have lost hope. We're in a world where nobody has hope. But the Bible says, but when they get hope, it comes as a tree of life. 
And in Proverbs 13, verse 17, it says, A wicked messenger falls into trouble, but a faithful ambassador brings health. But what about the prison? In Isaiah 42, in verses 6 to 7, It says, I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness and I will hold your hand. I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the Gentiles, to open blind eyes, to bring prisoners from the prison, those who sit in darkness from the prison house. In the time that the Bible was written, a prison was a pit. It could be one of two things. It could be this hole that was dug in the ground. You would be thrown into the pit and a lid would be put over the top. No light would come in. The other one was a building that had no windows. You'd be put in there, the door would be shut and all light would be extinguished. God has given us the light. Satan wants to keep people in darkness. Satan wants to keep people in prison. Stewardship is the form that we have to take the light to the world. So we're starting to get a bit of a sense of what our role is. But as I said, there's more to stewardship. If we turn to Exodus chapter 20 and verse 15. You shall not steal. Now before anybody gets up, starts to go to the head elder and start to uh, make complaints that uh, the treasurer has been up and called us all thieves, If that thought is going through your head, that is not me talking to you. There is another voice saying that you don't need to hear this message. If there's a voice saying, I am offended, I need to get out of here, that is not from God. I want to explain exactly what this verse means. Bring it into another context. I had the opportunity to, uh, to pick this book up from the ABC and I'm sure if you saw uh, our ABC secretary, it costs less than $4. And it says, what if we did it God's way? The Ten Commandments. And as we look at the Eighth Commandment, the writer brings it down into certain aspects. And I'm sure none of these apply to us. They may apply to Satan or they apply to people outside of our church. But it says one, theft. This is the first kind that comes to mind when we talk about stealing. The traditional kind of robbery, it means to take something without the owner's consent, to borrow something and not return it, to owe something and not pay. That's theft, plain and simple. Illegal copying, making a copy that deprives the author, artist and publisher of their right for compensation, whether it involves printed matter or material in digital or another format. What has this got to do with stewardship? Let me read on. Plagiarism, presenting another person's work or answers as your own in order to get a grade or another benefit for yourself. Information manipulation. Achieving personal gain or advantage through lying, exaggerating or telling less than the whole truth. It includes fraud, swindle, scam or any sort of deception that results in injury or loss to another person. And also the use of insider information to take advantage of someone. Satan is the author of these. Slander and defamation, depriving others of their reputation and good name and the esteem, love and respect that they have the right